Well, it's time for another uh, digital slide session. We'll start out with a very calm and peaceful setting and then move on to some exciting uh, pancreatic pathology. Here's our case for today. It's kind of a low power view of the entire pancreatic body. We see fat on both sides. Um, and we see there's not too much in the way of normal pancreatic parenchyma here. We've got a somewhat cellular area here, a little bit more of similar sort of tissue with maybe some vascular and cystic changes, some necrosis and calcification down here, more of that over here, and so forth. So let's start and look at, uh, first of all, what this necrosis looks like over here. See there's some calcification. A little bit of reparative changes and then maybe a little bit of uh, sort of tumor cell over here. Here we see some cholesterol clefts in multinucleate giant cells more giant cells here and scarring. So this doesn't look like it's really a tumor per se, but looks like it's some sort of repair or reaction to something that's been here before. If we look at the necrosis more carefully, we don't see too much here, other than a sense that there may be some sort of a tumor type architecture here uh, lying in the background. So we've got some sort of a lesion that uh, will necrose under certain circumstances. And you can see just barely maybe some of the little outlines of a few of the tumor cells, even maybe a little sense of a few of the nuclei here at higher magnification. So we'll look here and see what's going on in this area. So we have some of this hemorrhage and vascular dilatation going on, but then we see here it looks like we've got some uh, viable tumor. And we see it's got sort of uh, almost a papillary type of appearance with a central core with uh, some vascular structures. And then this uh, cystic change. And taking a look at the cells, here we see they're fairly uh, uniform, have pink cytoplasm, maybe some vacuolization to them. A few grooves here and a few of the nuclei and some very small nucleoli, not very conspicuous, slightly thickened nuclear membranes. A lot of hemorrhage in this area that may contribute to the sort of degenerative changes that we saw elsewhere. Coming over here, this more solid area, again we see this sort of um, papillary-like structures, some sort of central hyalinized, partly vascularized uh, cores, and then this similar pattern of epithelium here. Very small nucleoli, Fairly bland, not a lot of mitoses. Maybe one there um, in this characteristic appearance. So based on this type of architecture, especially with this papillae-like formation, uh, one would be thinking very early on about a solid pseudopapillary tumor uh, of the pancreas. Um, Differential diagnosis for that, of course, can include neuroendocrine tumors as well as um, some acinar lesions, um, and we want to uh, consider those as we look into the differential, perhaps getting some immunoperoxidase, although in general immunoperoxidase is not particularly specific in many of the commonly available stains uh, do not reliably differentiate between um, 
neuroendocrine and solid pseudopapillary tumors. If we jump quickly to the uh, immunohistochemistry component of uh, path outlines for solid pseudopapillary tumor, you'll see here that under the positive stains, there are a number of things that could be potentially confusing. CD56, neuron-specific enolase, and synaptophysin, all positive in a significant number of situations. It's also often cytokeratin positivity. So Beta-catenin is perhaps the more specific uh, given the differential diagnosis um, uh, in this situation. So coming back to our tumor, in summary then, it has the uh, morphologic appearance that uh, is compatible with solid pseudopapillary tumor. We see here that it's fairly well confined within the pancreas. These are usually fairly indolent neoplasms. Uh, the one additional thing that would help to confirm this would be the age and demographics of the patient. It's much more common in young women. Um, and uh, so anyone under the age of 40 with a tumor looking like this, uh, one should be thinking first of solid pseudopapillary tumor uh, long before anything else. So with that, we'll wrap up this uh, discussion and uh, wait for the next time. Thanks for joining me.